Good afternoon, Will. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great, thanks. And we're excited to see these guys on the field getting into OTAs and, and camp. How satisfied were, were you with the plan that came together? Uh, very satisfied because, you know, it was a, a different year of work um, from what we're accustomed to and the way the guys jumped in from a scouting standpoint and did their jobs and went above and beyond, then putting the board together, working with the coaches and figuring it out and then just seeing how it all panned out. Um, now we get, to, like you said, we get to see them on the field and see see what we got. Will, you guys got a couple of giant cornerbacks, and it feels like that's sort of a Dan Quinn imprint. How does that work leading up to the draft versus conversations when you're about to actually make a pick working with those coaches? Yeah, well, it's uh, the, the process started right after the season and kind of going into because we – you know, we're trying to figure out if we were going to have a combine and the way all those things came out from the COVID stuff. Well, you know, getting the opportunity to work with the coaches and find out with the new scheme uh, or, or, or different different defensive coordinator what we were going to be trying to do and what he valued most and then what uh, that's in the draft pool and even in free agency, what fit kind of some of the parameters that he was looking for. Uh, and the staff were looking for. Um, that was the big thing is spending time with them and learning them. And every year, or every different coaching staff, they have these little things that they want, they like, they don't like, you know, and, and learning those and, and uh, kind of putting together the board based on our values as football players and then what fits the team. This is kind of an off the wall question, but when you have like last year's defensive coordinator was only here for one year. So when coaches have that sort of input and you're trying to get guys that they want, as opposed to like Mike McCarthy has talked about before with the players over scheme, is that worrisome in any way to be kind of getting players for a guy and you never know how long that's going to last? No, I think, um, you know, you have to consistently as an organization, you got to, you got to have a barometer as to what, uh, starting and winning NFL players are and put your board there based on that. And we all know it's a big, strong, fast, athletic league. And I think if you, um, um, you know, kind of look at things that way, you have an opportunity to be more right than wrong and not changing all the time. So but when the coach says he wants a guy to play a certain technique, um, there comes the football coach side of it and then the scout side of it is well why does this guy play this technique better is it because of length is it because of leverage is it because of whatever and and, and try and put those pieces together and say what players fit the most at what value will did you feel like the draft gods gave you a gift with jabril cox there at 115 i, I know a lot of people had him probably going a lot higher than that uh did, did you have to sit there and sweat that one out yeah, we kind of sweated it out a little bit. I, you know, he was a, a guy that uh, when we came into the off season and were thinking about things and how you continue to improve the defense uh, and looking at the the landscape of how offenses are played now. Uh, there's a lot of it's a space game, and then there's a lot of uh, tight ends and big receivers, uh, slot type stuff that you have to cover in the way that the game is played. And so he's shown the ability to be able to do those things. So when it came down. We were going through the process. He was a guy that, you know, I thought fit that bill, and and several others did. And then, uh, you know, when he was sitting there, I said, "We got to go." You know, we got to go do that. It's the right time. It's Will McClay here with you on one hundred five three The Fan. Okay, uh, what was it like going through the first draft here with uh, with Dan Quinn and getting his perspective on things? Um, it was great. Um, Dan and I got to hit the road a, a few times together, so I got to. Uh, form a we call it we call each other the road dogs uh, at the beginning of it and uh, got some time to spend some individual time with him and hear his philosophies on on players on schemes on his experience in Atlanta and the different places that he's been uh, and and gain some insight into not only what kind of player he likes and why he likes certain types of players um, you know with with his background and things that he's done so it's been great and you know just sitting around him and watching the staff come together and the way that they are putting it together with the direction of Mike, but also Dan, um, it, it, it's been a great experience. Well, I love that we got to hear from Dan Quinn over the weekend, and I think getting his perspective helps a lot of people understand different things. With the first pick, Micah Parsons at 12, we generally expect if you're picked that high, you're going to start, you're going to play the majority of the snaps. 
Do you guys have a feel for how that looks with Van Der Esch and Smith and Keanu Neal? No, I think, you know, we got them all here and they're going to make figure out how to make it work. I think that the, there's a good problem to have is have talented guys and figure out how to get them all on the field together. And I think they have a good plan for it. I won't divulge that to you guys right now, but uh, uh, there's a way that you can do that and uh, use the talents of everybody. Well, I think one of my favorite picks you made in day three was Quentin Bohannon. And when you watch that Kentucky tape, and you see that number 95, it never it never turns. It always stays square along the line of scrimmage. Is this one of those guys? I mean, I don't remember ever having a guy that big on this in the, for this organization playing uh, playing for you guys like that. I, I think that uh, you know you, you, you got you, we've been around each other for a while, so we see things the same on a lot. And you know, you turn on the Kentucky tape, and that was the big, strong, long, athletic guy that played in the middle against the best competition. Um, it, and we wanted to get bigger there uh, in order to play run defense but also affect the passer. You need guys that can do it, uh, that can get you to third down in those passing situations. And a young player with his skill set and still being able to grow and develop, uh, you think there's some athletic uh, traits in there for him to be able to pass rush. Plus, he's big, strong, he's got 34-inch arms, which affects the A-gaps, which affects the passing lanes. Um, he was the guy that was interesting to how we how we're going to build the defense. Will McClay here with you on the fan now. Uh, Will with Josh Ball, it's a player we'd love to know more about as far as what helped you guys get comfortable with him, considering he you know seemed to struggle with uh, with the relationship there at the university. Yeah, I mean, what we did was we did our homework. Um, we passed it through. You know, we got the information that everybody else had. We looked at the situation at Florida State and we talked to people there. We've uh, visited with people at uh, at, at uh, Marshall, um, you know, and and spent time digging through it and spending time with the player to find out what the deal was. We gave it to our legal people, so we felt comfortable with all of the work that we had done on who the kid was and what uh, what he was all about, and as well as watching the tape and what he could do. He has the ability to play left tackle, right tackle. Uh, there weren't very many offensive linemen in this draft that had the measurables, the ideal measurables to play tackle, as well as the ability to play it physically with his feet and with his bend and all that other stuff. Um, so we were comfortable with the person before we started talking about the football player. We knew all of the issues that everybody else did. And one of the things that Jerry said in the press conference that I really applaud him for and stand true to is everybody uh, deserves a second chance if they have earned that second chance. And I think this kid has earned the opportunity to do that. And I think about all the things that all of us have done when we were young, maybe not to the level or extent that this may have gotten to, um, but we make mistakes, we learn from them, and we grow. So, Will, there's a, there's a video of Howie Roseman and the Eagles making a pick, and Tom Donahoe, the senior director of player personnel, clearly did not like the pick. Were there any picks in this draft that would be sort of your – fist pump guy when they took him and you were like yes this one that's my guy uh when we picked him yeah is there is there any of them where your reaction would have been absolutely yes nailed it that's that's my guy right there i think all 11 of them i'm gonna put my name and stamp on all 11 of them because i got you know i'm in in charge of putting the board together and listen to the scouts and putting it all together we do it collectively but if they're on the board there's something about them that fits us and that we're excited about. So I'm excited about all of them. I'll pat you on the back on that Stanford receiver. I think you got a guy with clutch genes there, man. That kid, when you watch him on tape, he, it seems like he makes every single play, Will. Yeah, I mean, he was a guy that, uh, you know, you look at the physical measurables and you say, boy, there's something there. Because, again, we're always looking. If you look at everybody's draft, they're always looking for the, you know, the big athletic guy with the high, uh, you know, athletic spark score or whatever. Uh, but then they have to be able to play football. And you see his measurables and you see him play and you see him, as you said, Brian, being a clutch guy for them. And uh, that he's just got this uh, it about him as a player uh, and he hadn't achieved his full ceiling yet. So I'm excited to get him with our offense and with Coach Henry, who uh, I've been around for a couple of years, who does an incredible job with receivers, making them better. So if you got a guy with a high level of, skill and talent and you need you know the right stuff to be able to refine that and grow and get better 
Um, I, I'm really excited about his opportunities to help us moving down the line, too. Yeah, I was talking to a guy at San Francisco, and you stole them from him. And so he was like, uh, you know, so tip of the cap for you for being ahead of the game on that one. We had we had about four or five. I had about four or five teams. A good contact player. Me after, that is a good player. Contact me afterwards, and they were they were like, damn, we were going to go after him. Yeah. Uh, Will should we expect a little interest maybe in the uh, recently released Jeff Heath? Um, we'll 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 look at it and address the issue as it comes. Um, I mean, we know Jeff, and Jeff's done great things for us, and he went to Oakland and had had a great season. But uh, we're you know we're going to go through and look at what we have on the roster and. We're going to look at every opportunity to improve us if it makes sense. Thank you so much for your time. We'll catch up with you in, in Oxnard Expose. Thanks, fellas.